Hey, would you like to learn more about how to navigate fearful avoidant attachment in dating and fearful attachment in relationships? Hi, I'm Antje Boyd, founder and creator of the Magnetize Your Man Method. And look, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to click that bell right below so you get notified for more juicy videos coming your way that help you to attract the right man for you. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Secret number one to really navigate fearful avoid attachment in dating or in relationships is ground yourself. Now, hello, hello, hello. What do I mean by that? So look, when you're fearful avoidant, what you do is you're leaving your body, right? You're leaving the scene, right? If I were to knock on the door, I'm like, hello, somebody home. Like most likely there would nobody be home, right? There's nobody there. There's no presence there. There's no awareness there. You're already gone. And that of course is coming from your past. Uh, it was safer for you to leave your body and in, versus to feel the pain, the emotional pain particularly, uh, to not get the response from your parents that you really needed. So what we wanna do here is ground yourself, right? Okay, so what that means, I'll give you different ways of how you can ground yourself, meaning how you can make sure you stay in your body. So one thing that I learned from my mentor years and years ago, is uh, to really learn to feel your feet. Now, I know this sounds really funny, right? But if you really think about it, you walk for the day, right? You go to work, you know, you make dinner, right? You drive. How often actually do you feel your body, right? So just really make yourself a little note even. Feel your feet. Do you feel your bum in your chair? Or do you feel when you lean back? Do you feel that, right? Do you feel actually your back touching the back of the chair, right? That really gives you like a really good grounding and make sure you stay in your body, you stay congruent, you stay aligned, and you continue to feel safe in your body. Secret number two is allow the extreme. Now hold on, what do I mean by that? So what we want to do, right, is like the fearful um, avoidant attachment style. It's like the avoidant and there's also the anxious part. Now, what oftentimes happens is when we go in one extreme, let's say we're going into the avoidant, very extreme, like super far out, I don't talk to anyone, I need massive amounts of space, right, I disassociate. Like then after that, we're actually having a judgment, right? We're actually feeling resistance towards this part. We're saying, but I feel so disconnected. I feel so disassociated. So let me swing all the way back into the anxious part. That at least gives me the warmth, the connection to the other person. Now, of course, then you swing too much into the anxious, you're gonna start judging that, and then you swing back into the avoid, right? So you go back and forth, you're swinging from one extreme into the other. However, you're never really allowing the extreme without judgment, without resistance. And then what happens, you swing automatically into the other extreme. However, if you stop resisting the extreme and you actually say, can I actually be more avoidant? Can I be actually more anxious? So almost like you're pushing yourself to the limit even further, Interestingly enough, you end up being more in the golden middle. Now, why is that? Well, because there's no more resistance. And when there is no resistance, you don't have opposing momentum that swings you all the way into the other emotion, right? Think about it this way. So you have this rebel part inside of you, right? And so if you don't like the certain emotions, so you don't like the avoidance, and a rebel part is like, oh, I'm gonna go all the way to the anxious part, right? Or if you don't like the really anxious part, right? Like, oh, I'm just gonna go all the way to the avoidant part. And so what your job is, is actually navigate the rebel inside of yourself that automatically always swings the opposite direction and instead just allow whatever is there to be there and eventually you end up in the middle. Secret number three is value yourself. Now, 
we have to think about it this way. Fearful avoidant attachment, whether it's in dating, whether it's in relationships, is really originating from a sense of not valuing yourself, right? From a sense of insecurity, from a sense of inadequacy, instability, right? So what needs to happen here in order to not go the opposite direction where you just like leave your body, you're just disassociated, right? You're just out, is that you actually value yourself, right? You appreciate yourself. You know when we say a house appreciates and value, right? There's value being added on to you. Now you may say, well, wait a minute, Antia. How in the world am I going to do that? How am I going to value myself? Now, I want you to take this example that Tony Robbins brought, right? So you said, look at it this way, right? So you have like a table that you draw. And so the table top is your statement. So let's say your statement is I'm valuable, right? And then the legs of the table are the real beliefs or the, you know, the reasons why you're valuable, right? So maybe you say I'm valuable because I was born. Uh, I'm valuable because I, I'm of service to other people. I'm valuable because, and so on, right? So you actually start adding on so many reasons why you are valuable. So you're actually making a case for yourself. So you want to do that? Try that out. Let me know how that goes. Secret number four is define boundaries. Now, it's really important when you're fearful, avoidant attachment, boundaries are extremely, extremely important, right? And not only defining the boundaries, but also communicating the boundaries. So when I meet a fearful avoidant attachment, so we just had one over the other day, what happens is I naturally already see, okay, so how much space do you need, right? How long would you like to stay? You know, how much alone time do you need? So there's this real boundary setting. Why? Because then that system actually starts to feel safe, right? So in defining boundaries is defining boundaries mentally, you know, what do I want to talk about? What do I not want to talk about? Uh, defining boundaries physically, literally, physically, right? Defining boundaries emotionally, right? Just really being like, hold on a second. I feel a little drained here right now. So if you have a lot on your plate or if you're like emotionally overwhelmed, don't call me. I'm going to have to set a boundary here because I'm, let's say, very emotionally sensitive, potentially, right? And I want to make sure I'm always coming from a full, loving, congruent place. And it's going to start to feel a little bit uncomfortable for me when I feel like I, my energy, my emotions are being drained. Now, and then also don't forget to set energetic boundaries, energetic boundaries, right? And that was the example that I just brought with this woman. Too. I was just kind of feeling her energy, right? And I said, you know, you want your like, you want space, do you? And like, I feel like you're not really getting that space. And she's like, yeah, you're totally, totally right, right? And she, um, you know, but like, you know, I I didn't know that about her. I've never met this person before, right? So that's about like really the energetic boundaries. Now, energetic boundaries you can really set by. You can do a couple of things. You can either visualize. You can visualize different uh, mirrors around you. And the mirrors, they're pointing to the outside. So they're reflecting back to the other person what they wanted to project onto you. So you're saying, no, thank you. I'm not a sponge, right? And so you're basically screening off, like reflecting um, back to them who they are, right? And you're not taking it on. Okay, so that's like one tool you can use to really create an energetic boundary. And lastly, Secret number five, safety equals space. Now, what do I mean by that? So I just brought you this example of this woman who just really, you know, um, has an avoidant attachment inside of her and as well as an anxious as well. Um, and so like giving her space, right? So my husband has a little bit of an avoidance inside of himself, right? So do I. So it's really important. So for example, in, uh, you know, doing our wedding, we really said with this ring, I set you free, right? I'm taking the space, I'm taking a stand for that part 
inside of you that wants to be free, that needs to have space, that needs to have a finely defined boundaries. We just discussed in secret number four. You know, it's just really, really important. And that means the other person feels safe, right? So when you're fearful, avoidant attachment and you receive space, you start to feel safe. And then interestingly enough, that safety then helps you to open up, right? Like that, that's really then what the other person desires of you. But ironically, and it's a little counterintuitive, you need to have the space first to then come closer. All right, this is it for today, ladies. The question of the day is which of those secrets help you the most? You're ready to implement into your life to either help yourself if you feel fearful avoidant attachment um, or your partner. So let me know in the comment section. Also, if you like this video, like it, share it with your girlfriends, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Well, look, if you're still looking to attract that right man for you and you don't know where the heck are you stuck, I invite you to take my Magnetize Your Man quiz at magnetizeyourman.com or click the link right below this video. Ladies, much love to you. This is it for today. I will talk to you next time. Take care. Mwah!